Hmm. I do believe that it was Thomas Jefferson who said, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. However, not all cells are created equal. Let's take a look at GCSE specialised cells. Okay, so we're here to learn about GCC specialised cells. Well, what are specialised cells? Well, the dictionary says that they are cells that have developed certain structural characteristics that perform a particular function. That's a job. And in order to be successful at GCSE, which specialised cells should we learn about? Well, you should learn a minimum of four, two animal and two plant. Let's look at the animal cells. Okay, so the animal cells. Trust me, these are the two easiest to learn. They've got concepts that come up time and time again. Let's take a look. The red blood cells, uh, they've got a special shape and they have no nucleus. That gives them much more space for oxygen to attach. They have a biconcave shape. As you can see in the right hand side of these two diagrams, uh, it's through a cross section. You can see that it's concave on both sides, which gives it a much greater surface area for oxygen to attach. And it's got a load of hemoglobin, this amazing chemical that attaches oxygen to it. Its function is to carry oxygen and these adaptations help it do it. Sperm cell. These adaptations really help the sperm cell. Its function is to get to an egg cell very quickly. And so it has an acrosome at the front of it. This has got a digestive enzyme in it that helps digest the outer layer of the egg so that it can get its nucleus to combine with the nucleus of the egg cell. There's the nucleus right in the head, right behind the acrosome. So it leads with it and it will put that uh, nucleus in with the egg nucleus to make a fertilized embryo, which is its main job. It's got all these mitochondria. Instead of them being scattered around the cell like a general cell that we saw in our basic cells, um, it, it's got them all close together like a battery power pack all in one place because behind that is the flagellum or the tail. It's, a flagellum is a special word. It's not strictly a tail. It's a fiber, you see. So the power pack of the mitochondria is right next to the flagellum and all that energy is helping that flagellum whirl around like a corkscrew. So there's a nucleus at the front it has a streamlined shape, which is really important because it's got a long way to go through quite dense liquid for its size. Its mitochondria are close to its tail and the tail propels it along, which is very unusual for, uh, for animal cells to have a tail. First, we've got root hair cells. This is the kind of hairs that you find on the roots of a plant, not the roots of your hair. So don't get confused. Now, they've got a long protrusion, as you can see on the left-hand side of this uh, drawing, because their job is to have a high surface area to take in lots of water by osmosis and um, actively transport lots of mineral ions into the roots and therefore into the plant. Osmosis and active transport, if you're getting confused about those, check out the cyber teachers' videos that I've done on those. So they have no chloroplasts. This is an adaptation. They're underground. Why do they need chloroplasts? They're not photosynthesizing. So the adaptation is that they've removed them. They've got this large protrusion, which increases the surface area massively. And they've got lots of mitochondria so that they can undertake lots of active transport as well as osmosis. The other plant cell you need to know about is the palisade cell. Conversely, this is in the leaf of the plant and its function is to undertake lots of photosynthesis. And so it's got loads of chloroplasts. It's also got a regular shape because it's got to have uh, lots of them packed close together like little bricks, close together with no gaps so that the light can't get in between them. It catches all the light it can. So all those chloroplasts are right close to the top of the cell and they are packed close together each cell so that it can can photosynthesize the best it can and make the most of that light energy. Okay, Mr. T's top tip on this one is learn these four specialized cells, their adaptations and their function and see how their adaptations meet their functions. You want to learn these because these four keep coming up, so learn them in detail. Only if you feel you have the capacity, learn the next four. So, in order to have greater success at GCSE, these are the next four to learn two animal cells. We've got the neuron, the nerve cell. It doesn't look like those basic cells we were looking at before. It's got an elongated axon and it's got dendrite protections and it's got a myelin sheath around it. So just so you can see what you're looking at, there's the nucleus in the middle of the cell body and it's got this long projection here which we call the axon a lot longer than we've shown it there. This is a really small scale version of a, of, of a nerve. It would be super super long. 
and it has these little projections at the end, these tiny projections. These are dendrites. They can talk to other neurons. They can send information between the nerves. So we have coordinated nervous responses. And wrapped around it is a myelin sheath. This is a fatty cell. Each one is a cell and it's wrapped around and round and round it. A bit like if it's had a little rug wrapped around it. For the muscle cells, they have filaments that slide over each other. They have to be able to slide over each other when they're contracted and then when they relax, they can slide back out. Because of that, they have a stripy appearance. They have two types of filaments. These are the filaments that slide over each other, actin and myosin. They've got loads of mitochondria because they need to have a lot of energy in order to do their contractions. They also share nucleus between them or nuclei between them. So you can see on that uh, picture there, the stripes are where the actin and myosin are overlapped or the filaments have overlapped. And then we can see this shared nucleus between them, which is very unusual for cells. Cells normally have their own nucleus. This nucleus serves a number of different cells. The plant cells. We've got the xylem cells. These are long tubes that carry water and mineral ions from the roots all the way up through the plant and to the shoots and to the leaves at the top of the plant. They're dead cells. This is very unusual. They were alive when they were put in place, but then all the organelles have been moved out of them because they would get in way of the in the way of the flow of the water and the mineral ions. So the end walls have also been removed. They've been put together so they form long tubes interconnected with each one another and their cell walls have been strengthened with lignin, which is this special chemical that makes the cell wall really strong and it means that it, won't, it will support the plant, but also it won't be pulled in on itself by the pressure of the uh, water and the mineral ions being sucked up to the top of very tall plants. The phloem, on the other hand, these are live cells. Their job is to carry sugars from the leaves down to the other parts of the plants and down to the roots. They are interconnected, but they have sift plates in between them. So unlike the xylem cells, which have got the end cell walls missing completely, these have got sift plates, so they can control which way the sugars are going. They also have special cells next to them, which are called companion cells, which hold all the internal organelles and serve these cells so that the organelles don't get in the way of the sugary sap that needs to flow between them. We can see there no end walls on the end of the xylem. However, on the phloem, we've got sift plates there and we've got the companion cells. So when you look at new cells, we need to be able to relate their structure, their shape, to their function, their job. It may be that you get a question where you have a look at them and you don't know what the cell is. But if it tells you that it's got certain organelles in it, you might be able to go, oh, yes, I know one of my specialized cells and I know what the job it can do because of those organelles it's got in it or the shape it is. OK, so here's a recap of all our specialized cells. We've got our red blood cell, our sperm cell. Uh, in the animal cells, and we've got our root hair cell and our palisade cell. Learn those four in detail, their function and their adaptations, and then go on, if you can, to the two more animal cells, neuron cell and muscle cell, and then the plant cells, xylem cell and phloem cell. And so in summary, learn two animal cells, the red blood cell and the sperm cell. Learn two plant cells, the root hair cell and the palisade cell. Remember, the root hair cell is in the roots of the plant, not on your head. More cells that are specialized cells that are useful for case studies are neurons, muscle cells, xylem cells, and phloem cells. So there's two animal plant cells there and there are two plant cells there. In total, eight cells, four animals and four plants. And remember, the structure and the function uh, go together. A cell's job, its function can be told from the way it's formed, its structure. So sometimes you can use detective work based on your experience of these specialized cells that you've learned to learn what they do. If you're interested in more biological resources, why not check out more of our videos that are labeled down here. You can look at the GCSE biological cells, which can explain more basic features before these specialized cells, or you can look at what the cells do after this in the cell cycle and mitosis. And if you really enjoyed it, please remember to like and to subscribe and we'll keep putting the Cyber Teachers content out there.